Hey everybody, welcome back to another production vlog. Uh, this is day two of a three-day shoot we did for a school district. Here we are again loading our new card out. Um, so we love doing these little time lapses. Um, this one took us about two minutes to set up and that was how long it took us to set it up with it fully broken down. Uh, other than we did leave, leave the wheels on this time, uh, we tried a, another way, a uh, different shoot where we broke it completely down, wheels and everything. And we found that it really doesn't take that much longer to break it all the way down. So anyway, it then took us about seven minutes to load out the cart. We've got all the different uh, poles going in. We've got a uh, camera. We did notice that uh, one of the tripod center posts actually fit perfectly down in this hole. So we use that little tripod center post to hold the camera. So that's what you see rolling right there is a tripod center post. So today we are still shooting with the Sony FX6, Sony FX3, and the new Blazar Remus Anamorphic 1.5X full frame anamorphic lenses. We've got the cart loaded down with a handful of stands, tripod, light tubes, and then we're clipping on some silks and floppies. We've got little Godox uh, 300 bicolor uh, just for flexibility. We've also got and this time we loaded that on a triple header adapter. Uh, that way we can get the light, two flags, uh, and we decided that it was too big and we didn't like this. We didn't bring the triple header back, but it was worth a try, you know? We gotta figure it all out. <laughs> try it every time. This is what we need a shot of. Here, Mike. Oh, grab a, uh, a grab a shot of me rolling that in. Mike got a couple shots of me rolling the cart in. Uh, just so you can kind of see what it looks like as we're rolling this thing in. Um, we're still really reviewing this cart. Uh, now one thing that uh, will come up later in the video is as we were loading this cart, we realized one of the tires was a little flat and it got worse throughout the day. Um, so we'll come back to that story, uh, but there's a little foreshadowing. So as we're rolling in, uh, and, and we've been to this campus so many times, we've worked with this client for like 14 years. Um, so I've been on this campus so many times. You know, rolls through the gate just fine. Yeah, that left one needs a little bit of a air. And again, we've got the big 21 and a half inch monitor, which we decided yeah. is kind of big uh, for rolling around. <laughs> yeah, you went pretty fast there. Uh, so a little bit of a tiny planet rolling here. You can see we've got the Ronin uh, RS2. We've got the tilta ring on that. Uh, and then we've got the camera. And that's, that's how we're rolling. Um, they had to take out the center post on the door for us to get in because that was a little bit of a tight doorway. Uh, we did find ways now uh, to go through doorways better. Uh, so in some of the later vlogs, um, we'll kind of talk through that. And we did not set up the gimbal uh, or the camera in the parking lot. So we get to set it up here and you get to watch us uh, put monitors up. Uh, we had the monitor on the FX6 rig real low for shoulder work. And... And Mike had to get his whole gimbal together. But here's a brief interlude of the tire. Uh, so we ended up getting a new tube in that thing and that worked out great. Here we are doing an outdoor interview. Um, you can see that nice high bright monitor is easy to see even in the sunlight. Uh, we've got the light just laying on the ground because we're cool like that. Here uh, you can see the lighting setup. We've basically just got a silk uh, and a floppy for negative fill because uh, we do like to keep that contrast ratio. Uh, these outdoor interviews can, you know, if you don't have that contrast ratio, they, they don't look as great. This is another interview we did. Again, we've kind of got that little uh, sandwich between the silk and the floppy to give that negative fill. Um, this is an interview we did in the shade. As I'm recording the voiceover for this, my wife just brought me a delicious piece of homemade gluten-free sourdough bread that she just finished making, and boy, it was good. So thank you, Emily. Now we're setting up for another scene. Uh, this is some B-roll. Just kind of showing some of the things that students do uh, in this uh, pathway at the school where they do performing arts and different things. So they're just showing a little piece of a play and they had a fun little thing with the Minotaur. Uh, so Mike's running around on stage uh, with a gimbal, uh, focusing himself <laughs> on those anamorphic lenses uh, while I am getting B-roll with the other camera. Uh, and we did a few takes on this thing and they eventually knocked off the Minotaur's arm, which was uh, pretty fun. And here we've got another outdoor interview set up. Uh, you can see this little sandwich that we kept making all day. Um, just walking a, a floppy in as close as we could get it to kind of keep the bottom of it from flopping around. Bring a silk in and that would make a nice little light sandwich that we would use. Uh, we mo shot most of these interviews on the 65 millimeter uh, in the Remus set, uh, which has a good look for 
interviews. And then we just would kind of keep uh, pivoting the world around uh, to get different interviews uh, in uh, a very small space without having to move too much. Um, and uh, you'll notice that uh, Mike's got that floppy tilted over uh, because we're really taking the, the light off of the top of them and, and really helping to bring that negative fill in. Uh, students came out, so we got a couple bits of quick B-roll. One thing I'd like to point out in terms of lighting is we, we've really been playing a lot with negative fill um, and watching videos. Um, I joined up uh, Shane Hurlbut's Filmmakers Academy because I want to improve my DP skills and uh, learning a lot about negative fill there as well as on other videos. And one of the things that we've really come to understand recently is negative fill does not suck light away negative fill blocks light and so having a larger negative fill source having it in closer it's not about sucking light away which is kind of the way i always thought about it it's more about blocking light um, shane likes to say it, it's what your subject sees what the skin sees so when you think about it that way like okay what, what do they see and if they see a big giant black flag then that's what's going to be quote reflected on their skin so uh, by by using that to block light uh, we're able to get a lot better a uh, lot better contrast ratio so we've been really kind of dialing in that negative fill you see a handful of shots here of the cart the monitor um, all that good stuff this was one of the interviews we were getting and you can kind of just see how that all comes together what I like to do when shooting on the, the Sony cameras is take the, the onboard monitor, uh, punch it all the way in for a critical focus, and then leave the external monitor uh, you know, wide. That way I can see the image there. So that, that's one little tip I use, especially when it's outdoors and it's just really hard to see. Here's just some beauty shots of the cart in action all loaded up. Um, kind of as we're doing our setups and things. So you can see this is a really nice cart. We're really, really pleased with it. Um, it carries stuff well. Uh, we really loaded it down the other day. That'll be a whole nother video. Uh, but we kind of, we, we pushed it in it and it responded well. Yeah, we did use the, the 100 uh, millimeter lens for some of these interviews, um, which had a really good look. It probably compressed the background a little too much, but for some of the shots, it was what we needed and it, and it looked great. Uh, people hate on the 100 saying it's soft, but you know, if you if you stop it down to F4 or whatever, it, it's a good lens. Back to rolling this cart around and the, and the tire's flat, so you can see we, we struggle some moments um, to roll that around. You can see here we're kind of zooming in on that flat tire, um, which you know, it, it rolls because Mike's lifting the cart because um, he's a strong beast um, <laughs> of a man as he's doing this thing. Michael lift this whole, just like deadlift this cart in another car. I'm like, all right, I'm not that big and strong. Uh, but yeah, you, you see it like totally wobbling there uh, if you like lets go and lets it go on the wheel. So anyway, um, definitely don't roll over goat heads. That was uh, what took the, the, the wheels out. Um, but hey, that's just like anything else. Josh, you do this every day? Just, yeah, you guys tired? <laughs> <laughs> a bit. Sony's only speaking for themselves. Always have fun banter with the clients, you know. But, I mean, again, we, and we know these people. Like we've worked ah. with these people for years, so we have fun. I have fun with Mike too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we'll, we'll come. We'll come back in five or ten minutes. We went out to the car to air the wheel up. So I'm guessing it plugs into your cigarette lighter, right? Exactly. The pump was not in the car. So we rolled all the way out to the car for nothing. So we had to roll it right back in. Um, still with a flat tire. There's that wheel. Still flat. But you know what? Overall, it's doing good. Camera gets uh, shaky, especially that gimbal gets shaky sometimes. So um, we found that if we pile enough sandbags on it, it stays stay smooth so that's what we are doing now piling lots of sandbags on it which keeps it steady um, just all the things you got to figure out as you uh, start using a new piece of gear for the first time so here comes another time lapse of setting up because we love time lapses of setting up um, here we had to figure out our spot we got to meet our students and we had to make our little light sandwich again um, and so we just kind of are looking at both sides of this thing um, so Mike's over here setting up lights while I'm setting up camera He's got a monitor so we can see what's going on. Uh, we're setting up a silk. We're setting up the floppy uh, to keep the sun off. And the wind starts blowing. You can see it in the trees. And 
it was a little windy. So we ended up having to uh, stick something in the uh, little pocket. And all we had was our tube lights. So we stuck a tube light in there, which was exciting. So Mike was kind of hanging out, holding on to that tube light to make sure that it wouldn't bang against the pole and bust our tube light because that would have been too exciting. We also determined based on the direction the wind was blowing, it was safest for Mike to hold on to that floppy. That way the floppy could not fall over and hit our students. Uh, and if the silk went, you know, at least it wasn't going to hurt anybody. Also doing is making sure we have sandbags on everything, but boy, was that wind kicking and it just kept kicking. And at one point, something really exciting happens and Mike is here behind our, our floppy so he can't see the silk. Otherwise he would have caught what's about to happen. And I was on the other side of the camera the moment it happened, so I didn't see it either uh, as it started to fall. But uh, Ruben, who was uh, uh, from the district run, helping run the interview, he, he saw it and he ran for it first. Um, and then we came, got it, got it dialed in, and then Sonia came and, uh, and held on to it for us because the wind was just blowing hard. Uh, but another benefit of having that floppy was it was also, I mean, look at Sonia's hair just blowing in the wind, but our interview subject, it's not uh, blowing in his mic, it's not messing up his hair, because that silk is, or I'm sorry, the uh, floppy is doing double duty as a windbreak uh, in addition to uh, providing that shadow uh, for the lighting. So anyway, fun things. Always bring more sandbags uh, than you think you need, which we brought more next time. Normally we don't fly something like that without heavier sandbags, but we're trying to go light and nimble so we have the light stands instead of the C stands. Uh, we didn't bring a ton of sandbags because, you know, we're trying to move fast. Uh, and we decided that that was a mistake and we're not doing that again because, you know, safety. But thankfully nobody got hurt and uh, the equipment didn't even get damaged. That was great. Um, more shots of rolling the card out because that's really, really exciting footage um, because everything about production is about rolling your cart around. Um, can you tell we're excited about this cart? And now for a little 13 minute uh, load up sequence. Because it always takes longer to put back than it takes to come out. I don't know why, but it's just a truth. Uh, it never goes back in the car as fast as it comes out of the car. Uh, especially when you got to break stuff down. Now, at this case, it was also the end of the day, so we were uh, about to take an hour drive back to Bakersfield from Porterville, and so we were putting things away in cases a little more safely because we're not just rolling five minutes between locations. We're actually like putting them in the back in the boxes and whatever to uh, make it totally safe for transport, so we're breaking the gimbal all the way down and this and that and whatever. So um, anyway, more more breakdown than we normally would have by you know a few minutes if we were just rolling to the next location, but still, um, all this has to happen. And here we go, breaking the cart down. All said and done, another successful shoot. We do have one more location we're gonna roll out to, but we're not bringing everything, so that's why we're packing everything down. This last location just rolled in, kind of minimal, just brought in camera, a silk, a light, we should have brought the neg. We didn't bring the neg, we should have brought the neg. We looked at the footage and we're like, we should have brought the neg. Uh, even, even while we were there, we're like, we should get the neg. But, you know, we were tired and it was the end of the day and we just decided to be lazy and not bring the neg. And we just T-barred the tube light, super easy, just clamped it on the light, didn't bother booming it or anything. Just kind of kept it simple, but hey, you know, it was, it was a schedule and we had to move. And so sometimes you just gotta cut corners and just keep things moving, which we did. Um, you can see there the uh, close up in the monitor. And we shot that one on the 65. And that's kind of what it looked like uh, without D-Squeeze. Just looking on the uh, phone monitor app so you can kind of see what that looked like. So yeah, we could have made it look nicer if we had more time, but we didn't have a lot of time and we didn't want to have to roll the entire rig roll in. Well, thanks for watching another production vlog. Stay tuned for more. Uh, we've got more shoots coming and we've already, I mean, we've already shot more, more vlogs. Uh, I've already got them in the can that I just got to get edited and out to you guys. So uh, keep tuning in. Uh, we'll be working through the different gear that we have and lighting setups and all kinds of fun stuff. So stay tuned for that and we will see you in the next one.